Sure, it's going okay. Uh, let's still be. That's okay. That's still delayed. Is crazy, right? Okay. Then we've got this, and then this will be. Oh, that's. Wow, did we actually get decent lighting for the first time? <laughs> yeah, this looks in front of this the This is way thing. better. Okay, so yeah, that's working now. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I think, I think we're good, right? Yeah? Yeah, You want to do the kicking? I don't mind. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Alrighty. All right. Hey guys. Um, so we're back again for another <laughs> live video. Uh, if you joined us uh, earlier in August, we gave you guys a little bit of a sneak preview of our US and UK boarding school uh, seminar. So thanks for joining us. Um, my name's Emerson. Uh, my name is Cecily. Hey, Cecily. How's it going? Hey, Emerson. Hey. Um, so thanks for uh, joining us. I know we're starting um, a little bit early, so we'll get, um, we'll get going here. Uh, in a minute, uh, a little after 2.30, um, but we will be posting uh, this video um, along with all of our videos on YouTube and stuff like that. So uh, if you need to head off in the middle of the, the uh, seminar or if you want to share any of the information uh, with people you know later on, um, then you can just catch everything on our YouTube. So we'll give the link uh, later on. You can watch this at any time. Um, but today we're going to get into uh, U.S. and uh, U.K. Um, boarding school applications. Um, this is kind of a big thing this time of year. Uh, I think three of my classes earlier today were actually U.S. boarding cases. Um, they're huge because it's just because of the timelines and when you need to complete everything. So um, we're going to get into the different application timelines. We're going to do a lot of different stuff today. But um, oh, hi. Um, hopefully answer all your questions. And then, like I said, if you are catching this video on, on YouTube or um, anywhere else we post it, just call on in uh, anytime and um, ask, ask later. Um, yeah, guess we'll get going. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay, so um, here's everything we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to kind of go over uh, why you would potentially go to boarding school, um, the different application formats and timelines, like I said. Um, but then some more specific stuff, like actually uh, making a list of schools uh, that are good fits for you. Um, everybody kind of thinks of the the reach target safety kind of lists and, you know, sort of wonders how you can go about doing that. Um, but then also how to prep for any admissions tests. There are different tests for the U.S. versus the U.K. Um, planning your visits. Uh, it's a little bit special this year, but um, in general, you have to plan vi visits. And then we'll take you through um, an entire application checklist. So I don't know. Do we miss anything there? No, I think that's that's everything. I think, like you said, it's going to be a little different given the circumstances. But, um, yeah, just the differences between UK and US and what to expect and which one is more suitable for you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay, what's this? Okay, so why boarding school? We put together a sort of top 10 of um, why you might want to go to boarding school and also why boarding school would be beneficial for you. Um, so I guess that the first one there, well, number one, well, I guess the top three um, we both agree on, and this goes for UK and for US, it gives students such a um, a sense of personal responsibility, you know, moving away at either 11 years old, 13 years old, 14, 15 um, it's not something that every student does, um, and it's a huge leap in maturity and growing up and uh, becoming more responsible for yourself. And it's almost like university just sort of five years earlier, you know, yeah, having yeah, to take yeah. care of yourself yeah. and and sort of 
survive on your own. Um, and then the other two are both just kind of crossover UK and US, multicultural experiences and extracurricular options. You know, being exposed to students from all around the world, um, many different countries, many different languages, meeting different people from different cultures. Um, and extracurricular options, of course, they're available at, at schools that are here in Hong Kong. Um, but just the variety that you get from going abroad yeah. is is huge. And the yeah. culture associated with those, you know, it's not just like playing a recreational sport here for fun. It's like a, a new way of life. Playing yeah, sport no, I mean, there. honestly, yeah, I, I think um, with the, the campuses set up the way they are to accept people from all over the world, you're going to meet people from places you may have never heard of and you're going to be exposed to cultures that you never thought you'd learn and um, the schools are really set up with different events and activities whether it's sports or social engagements and things like that so that you can really gain a sense of you know the world and and you know where you want to be within the world and so that's kind of one of those big spots um, to do it as a U.S. or U.K. boarding school. Um, other than that I mean Challenging academics, these sorts of things, the teachers, the, the, you know, that, the, those things are here in Hong Kong as well. Um, I know it's kind of low on the list with number nine, the facilities, but something that I do kind of hear back from some of my students um, is like the open spaces, um, you know, a massive football pitch or, uh, a, you know, a lacrosse field or, you know, some of these schools will have three to four different indoor and outdoor, you know, performance arts theaters yeah. and this sort of stuff. So, or even just like this picture here, buildings that are hundreds of years old that yeah. people have been studying forever. It's a really exciting thing to be able to, uh, to be in. Yeah, I mean, they'll tell like, you know, how many Nobel Prize winners went here? Which, mm -hmm. which U.S. presidents went there? Or, um, you know, current prime ministers, former prime ministers, you know, these sorts of things. Um, you really do get a sense of, of the history and, and those facilities – are massive. You have so much opportunity to kind of run around and um, and get your hands dirty and, and have some fun with it. Um, no, oh, there we go. Okay. Um, here's kind of a quick look at, um, I guess, just the vibe. Um, the vibe for some of the U.S. Uh, boarding uh, campuses. It's definitely all around school spirit, I think. that's. I was talking to somebody about this earlier today. Um, one of the reasons that a lot of people get excited about going into the U.S. is you really do get that campus vibe that you might see um, on TV or in, in movies <laughs> and stuff like that. And um, yeah, yeah. So it's it's exactly what you would imagine. All the stereotypes, all the cliches. Um, you're going to find yourself going to, you know, the major sporting events. Everybody, you know, will be at like the basketball game. Everybody will be going to this social event or, or whatever it is. And, and because you're boarding and, and you know, 70 to 100 percent of people are going to be boarding, um, there's other cool stuff, too, like uh, movie nights where, you know, the school will just actually order a, a bunch of pizzas and then you guys go into one of the theaters and watch a cool movie together. So you are, you know, just doing everything together. You get a really cool campus vibe, a real great uh, sense of kind of just, yeah, school spirit and camaraderie and um you know, they'll do the U.S. does reunions, five year reunions, 10 year reunions. People come back and over and over and over again because they miss those vibes. And so it's a lot. It's a lot of fun, a lot of different activities. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I guess similar really for the U.K. Um, here's a couple of pictures that sort of, I guess, sum up the experience. I think one thing that students here often quite like or that they get a bit excited about is some of the school uniforms, which I always forget about. Yeah, yeah. I like the hats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but again, just like Emerson said, you know, a real community and, and, and closeness um, feel to it all. Really traditional um, kind of activities, you know, either traditional sports or being able to go and see some of these um, quite historic buildings and study in them and live in them. And, um, you know, a few of the pictures there will show some of the local areas um, getting out and about. One advantage of the UK is it's quite little. So being able on weekends to go and see a different city, go and visit different places um, and do it all with your with your classmates, the people you're studying with as well. So I'd say across for both of them, a real yeah. uh, community spirit, yeah. definitely differences between the two. But um, what, are, what are the differences? <laughs> what are the major differences you think? Go for we it. We don't have any major sort of varsity sports games there. I'd say sports, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know, when we play sport, we take sport seriously, but we don't have sort of stadium 
for yeah. people yeah. Uh, at sort of high school age. Yeah, high school high school level stadiums that'll fill like twenty thousand. Yeah, that we do not have people. That. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> it is a little bit crazy. Yeah, maybe um, a little bit wilder. I think a lot lo- louder, brasher. I think um, mm-hmm. overall in America, which is yeah. kind of the stereotypes. I think so, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Um, right. Okay. So we're going to get into some different ideas for your applications. Um, again, if you guys do have any actual questions, please, uh, if you're watching the video, just type it into the chat and we'll, um, we'll try to get to you as soon as possible. But if you do, if you are watching this later, uh, either comments on our YouTube page or just call in. Um, we also have live chat on our website too. So you can just actually start a chat anytime you want. Um, so let's take a look at some of these. Um, I'll start off with the, the U S side. Um, the main thing for the U.S. side is to uh, figure out which application or applications you're going to use. Um, a lot of the schools do offer um, applications on their actual website. So if you go to the school website, you can apply for there. But that's that's definitely the minority. That's only, you know, one percent of the schools. So, you know, 99 percent of the schools are going to require you to go through uh, one portal or the other. Um, the first one is going to be called the SAO. Um, and if you have already registered for your SSAT, uh, which is the test you need, um, that's the SAO. That, that's the, the SSAT people uh, is the SAO. So they're the same thing. And you can kind of like when you sign up for your SSAT test, you can also set up your profile for your application. So it's super convenient. Um, it's all on one site, one company. And yeah, really, really easy. I think the biggest thing about that is, is just how easy and time saving it actually is. Um, it's got hundreds and hundreds of schools. Um, almost every school is on the SAO, almost every school. Um, so you have a really great, you know, breadth of options. Uh, when you go onto the SAO website, you can search school by, um, by state. Um, and there's all these different sort of uh, uh, parameters you can use to kind of figure out what's the best school for you. So if you're not really sure um, or if you have somebody who's living in, you know, uh, New York or Massachusetts or even a place like uh, North Carolina or Texas, uh, you can search by state and find locations and really find out what the best school is for you. Um, the other really cool thing about the SAO is it's just one application um, and you complete it. So all those schools that you put in your list, that you add to your list, will see the same application. So what that means is you just get to save a ton of time. Um, you can just basically click and add schools and then send everything off. You're not doing anything extra um, like, like the gateway. So the other option is um, the gateway portal. Uh, this is only 61 schools. Uh, and these are kind of like the... Yeah, they're like the better ones, the best ones. Um, they're really difficult to get into for the most part. Not all of them. There are some easier schools, but it's kind of like a club. It's kind of like an elite little club of gateway schools. And these are probably a lot of schools that you've heard of before, um, like Andover or uh, Choate or Deerfield or, you know, all these kind of big name schools that a lot of people will talk about in Hong Kong. Um, yes, they're on the SAO. They're also on the SAO. Um, but then they also offer the gateway. So uh, how do you choose? Well, typically um, you choose the gateway schools um, for the ones that you really, really love, but also you want to dedicate more time to. Um, In contrast to the SAO, the gateway, you have to do every application separately. So what that means is you're doing separate essays, and, um, you know, there's, there's, you have to submit it separately. There's separate application fees for this and that. And um, so it, ta- it takes a lot more time. Um, so that's the disadvantage is it takes a lot more time to say, okay, I'm going to do my SAO application. I have to do that first. Um, and then I'm going to do, if I'm going to do six gateway schools, that's six more separate applications that I need to complete and submit. Um, and it does take time. But the advantage is, that you can write your essays and and do the application and only that one school will actually see it. So it's kind of like a private application. Um, Whereas, like I said before, SAO, everybody sees the same application. So you can't really talk to a school specifically. Um, 
and 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 that saves time yeah but it, you you can't really sell yourself as much so the gateway schools yes more time but also you can speak directly to the schools and they kind of know that you're really interested in them yeah does that, that makes sense yeah that does make sense i guess that one's a bit more similar to the way it works in the uk then because the uk doesn't have for boarding schools one common portal yet we often joke that we should probably set that up because I mean, it would it's be a, a yeah it'd be a millionaire yeah somebody needs to just figure this out the UCAS for boarding schools it's, it, the UCAS is. should just take it over yeah, I just don't understand I know but the, so the UK as it says there is school specific applications um so there is no common portal so what that means is um you've got to get to know the schools really before you um, apply to any of them in the UK. You've got to go on their websites, have a look at what they're about, where they are. Um, do you feel like that would be a good school for you? Um, and then you make an application directly to that school. Now, generally, once you get to that stage of applying, it becomes quite similar from school to school, but you do have to do them all separately. So mm -hmm. as it says there, it says, um, get to know the admissions tutors, um, which is something that you will do as you begin to apply because you will be in direct communication with the school. There is no middleman, there is no uh, portal there. Um, so you will be applying directly to the school, they'll be communicating directly with you. Um, so generally, um, a little more time consuming, I'd say on the UK yeah. side. Um, but the good thing is, um, the exam that you'll need to prepare for is the same for all of them. So whilst it's school specific applications, the exam you'll need to take is uh, very standardized in terms of structure over the... All yeah, the skill, the skill sets and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right, so quick summary. Um, as Cecily just said, all the UK ones are done separately. Uh, the SAO for the US side, everybody's in there. Um, like I said, there is, you know, 1% you know, of schools that might just have their own website set up or whatever it is, that's fine. But SAO is 99% of the schools. And then Gateway, here are some of the names that you might recognize. These are some popular choices for a lot of uh, families, a lot of students, um, but they're generally considered the top schools, the better schools. And, and, and um, that, that's why the applications are all separately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, summarize what we said before, the UK, every application is done separately. Mm. Um, luckily not really, really long. The UK doesn't tend to do sort of uh, lots of sort of personality questions, like tell us about a challenging moment, tell us about this. It's not too oh, long. That would be good for you, though. Yeah. yeah. It's easy for me. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's a little time consuming in terms of yeah. admin. Ad yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but staying organized is yeah. pretty, pretty important. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So here is a basic timeline. Um, I want to, I want to sort of uh, preface this by saying, is this the exact timeline for everybody? Uh, no. Um, most people, you'll see at the top of the page here, this is for grade nine entry. Um, so if you want to begin at the first year of high school, the first year of high school is grade nine um, in the U.S. So if you want to begin in the first year, this is sort of a recommended timeline. Um, that you can use to make all your plans, okay? So you'll see that it kind of does begin about two years out um, with grade seven uh, actually, you know, beginning your test prep. You'll see the SSAT um, and the, the UL, that means the upper level. So you will need to do the hardest version to apply. Um, can you apply for grade 10? Can you apply for grade 11? Yes. Can you apply for grade seven? Yes, you can do all of these things but the majority of families we speak with um, are going for grade nine. So if you do have questions about different grades, please let us know and be happy to help out. Um, so you wanna begin grade seven with all the test prep. Uh, you also wanna kind of get stuff going with your uh, inquiries and you know, searching up the different schools, becoming aware of the different uh, schools and the communities, the locations. Um, if you've never been to America, you might need to familiarize yourself with the geography of some of these schools, where they actually are. Um, do you want to go East Coast, West Coast, somewhere in the middle? Um, you know, these are the things that you might think about. Um, and before the end of the year, before the end of grade seven, um, you'll see that you can actually start taking, you know, you might want to sit yourself down, take some diagnostic tests or sign up for a test. Um, but that would be just for practice. Um, I do want to make it very clear that your SSAT scores, um, you can only submit the scores that you are taking in the year of application. So even if I do some, some prep 
during grade seven and I get some real test scores or I do some, some mock exams, you can't submit any of those. Um, you will need to take the test right now, actually. There's one at the end of the month um, for people. So there is a test in September, October, November, and December. And those are the test dates that you can submit. It has to be for that year um, you're doing it. So you need to do it in grade eight. Um, typically around this time of year, students will start planning uh, to visit schools. You'll see that in grade eight around the beginning. Um, that's because Hong Kong, a lot of the schools will have their, their um, fall break in October. Um, so this would be the time where you might consider flying over, uh, walking around campus, um, you know, getting getting way too much American food and gaining a couple of pounds. Um, but uh, during that process, you'll also want to take notes and and prepare for uh, interviews. Um, something that you'll actually want to do is take those notes and apply them to when you're doing your interviews. Um, your interview prep can begin in grade seven, like I said, um, but then it is up to you to schedule your interviews sometimes before the application deadline. That can be literally any time. Um, but make sure it is the, um, the same year. Uh, other than that, the deadline is pretty comfortable. Um, it is January 15th for almost every school. There are some that are not that day, but 99% um, is January 15th. So um, that's when you want to do uh, all your applications. I think one of the other questions that I do get pretty often is, uh, what is the order I submit things? Um, you can do your interviews before you submit your essays. You can do your interviews literally anytime. Um, and then you can just submit your essays before January. So take your time and do it right. Um, similarly, you, you can submit any test score you want. So you don't have to submit the September one um, if you're you know, going to wait and see what the December test looks like. So you can submit your test scores um, anytime before January. And so the, the timeline is nice and comfortable. It's about a two-year timeline. Um, do you need to have two years? No, but the main thing is just test prep, the, the SSAT. Yeah. 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 Um, for the UK, um, as Emerson said, kind of any year is doable for entry in secondary school in the UK, but there are three years that make it a lot easier because they're the common ports of entry. So they are year seven, year nine, and year 12. And the reason for this is year seven is the first year of what we call secondary school. Um, year nine is the year before your GCSE exams and GCSE prep begins in year nine. And year 12 is first year of what we call sixth form, which is um, as you begin your A-levels. Uh, so two years before university. Um, year eight entry and year 10 entry are possible. Uh, we have a student right now uh, working with me doing year 10 entry. She'll be doing the 14 plus exam. It is possible, it just isn't as common. So I would say these three ports of entry that I'm gonna go through now are easier in terms of applications, but also easier in terms of social integration because they're gonna be the years that the other students are going in at as well. You know, you could go in in year eight or year 10, but you might be one of five kids going in that year new. Whereas if you go in in year seven, year nine or year 12, you are one of a lot of new kids. So it just, for that, it kind of makes it easier. Um, Generally, um, applications begin um, one or two years before. As you can see here for year seven entry, um, we need to begin sort of registering with schools um, right at the start of year six. Um, often this will be year five as well, but generally towards the end of year five, summer of year five going into year six is when we start to contact schools and tell admissions tutors that we're interested in coming. Um, so we get ready now at the start of year six. I have a student who's doing year seven entry for next year, and he is in the process of um, paying sort of registration fees with schools and getting ready to go to schools, um, ready for the exams in October, November, and interviews in January time. So year six tends to be the busiest year um, for the year seven entry. Your exams and your interviews will take place, and you'll know uh, sort of spring term in year six where you're going to be going. Um, year nine entry um, is even sooner. Um, sort of similar time for applying for year seven entry, you want to be getting ready for year nine entry because schools like to know when you begin secondary school that in two years you'll be going to their secondary school. Um, so year seven for year nine entry is when you'll be registering with schools and taking the English and maths pre-tests um, and then sitting your um, CEE, which we'll come on to as the common entrance exam. You'll take that in the year seven. 
So actually, by the end of year seven, if you were doing year nine entry, you'd actually know where you were going um, well in advance. For the whole of year eight, you just enjoy your last year at your current school and get ready to go somewhere in year nine. Um, nice. It's pretty nice, yeah. And then for year 12, a little different. Um, you'll be looking to register and get ready to go to schools from year 10. Now, this is because when you go to year 12 in the UK, we actually only take four subjects. And then we drop down to three in year 13. So in year 10, you'll begin your GCSEs. Um, so you'll be doing um, exam specific entrance exams for year 12. Um, so it's, it's sort of for this one, it's a little harder because you've really got to think ahead two years before what you want your A levels to be. And therefore, the way the UK works, thinking about what your degree will be. So this one requires quite a lot of pre pre thought, um, yeah. pre planning. Um, because by year 11, you want to, the start of year 11, you want to be taking your um, specific subject exams for your A-levels. Um, so they're the three common ports, and generally you want to be looking to get in touch with schools, register with schools two years before you go into that year. But again, case by case, because there's no common portal, because we contact schools directly, exceptions are always made. But this is what admissions tutors and admissions departments like to stick to, makes their life easier. So yeah, I, mean, I, I <laughs> think, think yeah, anything can be done. Um, we had somebody ask our front desk, um, do you think that an application for junior high, if you go for grade seven to start in grade seven or start in grade eight, Will that give you an advantage going into the school? Uh, yeah, but be careful because not all schools offer grade seven, grade eight. Um, some of them offer grade nine, but they don't offer grade 10. Um, one of the, the my students in the past um, went to a grade school. It's called Fay Fay School, and they actually go up to grade nine, um, but then stop. So everybody who goes to Fay School must then transfer to a different school for grade 10, 11, 12. Um, so in general, yeah, if you can get into the school earlier, that's great. But just beware that, you know, the schools check the schools on your list to see, do they offer grade seven? Do they offer grade eight? And if they do, do they go all the way to grade 12 or are you going to need to apply uh, again? Um, what about applying to grade 10? Well, it's, it's exactly like Cecily said. It's very common. People can do this. People do it all the time. But it is just a little bit like you missed the fir first year. Mm -hmm. Um, so it might give you an advantage for the admissions because fewer people apply for that year, but then, yeah, you'll have to just jump in and make sure you start, you know, getting those friends and having fun because, uh, everybody already has one year uh, ahead of you. Yeah. 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 Um, there we go. Yeah. I think we kind of covered that yeah, a little bit. So just yeah. make sure you think about what IGCSEs are you taking or GCSEs and do they match up to the A levels you want to do and ultimately degree you want to do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, timing really is everything with the UK. Um, so, as I mentioned, it really does align with the UK curriculum in terms of starting secondary school, starting pre-GCSE and starting A-levels. Um, so, that's really the main thing. Does it align with the curriculum? Um, and really, the UK, it all kind of lines up perfectly. What you start to do in year seven really sets you up very well for year nine, then GCSE in year 12. Um and we call them key stages in, in the UK and then GCSE and then A-level. Um, and again, the social transitions. A lot of the time with these schools, you'll see if you're doing a year nine entry, that's very common because actually that school only starts offering boarding in year nine, let's say. So it might have had year sevens and year eights at the school, but they're day students. So they have families in the local area. So then coming in in year nine, you're coming in with all the boarding kids, you know, because that's when they start to offer the boarding. So it's a social transition thing, it's a curriculum thing, and it's an age thing. So um, timing really is is key with with UK applications. Yeah, um, yeah let's go through. Okay, so yeah. this is kind of, I, I kind of think of this as one of the fun parts. I think it's it's almost like a, like a Christmas list or a shopping list or something <laughs> where like, oh man, I, I want all of these. And, and it's really fun to kind of imagine uh, yourself at these different schools and what it might actually be like, you know, walking the halls and, and meeting all the people from all over the world. So I, I think this is fun. A lot of people kind of think that this is one of those, you know, difficult things to organize. We're going to show you what, a, you know, some great spreadsheets look like. We made some good spreadsheets mm -hmm. for you guys. So you can feel free to copy us and what we do with our students. Um, 
and and go from there. But in general, yeah, let's let's show you how to stay organized. Yeah. 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 Um, so here here is one of those U.S. spreadsheets. You can kind of see a lot of the different headers um, in that list, starting with you know how do I personally rank these schools? Um, they might be ranked. I made I make my rankings. If you'll notice on this list. I do it by the percentage of applicants admitted. Um, that's one of the, the, the better ways I feel to give you a good idea of your, the success rate um, applying to those schools. So you can kind of see some of the top schools, 13% of people, and that's people around the world. So out of all of the countless people who apply, only 13%, about one in every 10, will actually get in. Um, so it is highly competitive, and I would recommend um, making sure that you do stay organized in a way that you realize which schools are easier and which ones are more difficult. Um, don't just say, oh, this is my favorite, so that's the one I'm going to go for. Um, your favorite is probably a lot of people's favorites. Um, so uh, you know, keep that in mind. You can have your own ranking system, um, but then do look at some of the key statistics. Uh, I would say another thing that you want to take a look at is – the SSAT average score, the average score. So uh, obviously an average means some people do higher than this. Uh, this does not mean that you're in. You could be rejected with a 99% and that does happen to people. Um, so if you're not looking at admission percentage, um, do make sure you are at least looking at the SSAT scores to see where you fit uh, within the overall pool of applicants and how competitive um, those SSAT scores are. Um, you'll notice that some of the schools have um, lower SAT um, uh, admissions percentages. What does that actually mean? Uh, it means they put more value on your school grades. Uh, they put more value on your essays uh, and your interviews. So the SSAT is a really important thing and you should try your best. It's definitely going to help you out in every case, get a good score. Um, but it's not the only thing. Um, so the other thing I would make sure that you do consider is, you know, going through the website. You can see I've got all my website links here as far as, you know, extra information that I might be able to search and find out about the school. Um, but next to it is the inquiry form. Um, this is something that you will have to do. And I showed these last time, but I'll just go ahead and show you what, what you get. When you fill out the inquiry form, um, it's required. You have to actually fill it out. And this shows the school that you're going to apply and then gets your name on the list of applicants. But then also you get some really cool, um, you know, uh, magazines and literature that they'll send you about the school. Um, this one is from Choate. Um, and they want you to go through and familiarize yourselves with this sort of stuff and make sure that you get a good look. Um, this one is from Deerfield, I think. Yeah, I mean, look at these. These, these are, are nice. They're so nice. Yeah. I mean, what does this cost? It's, yeah. it's absolutely insane. So you've got the, the, the Deerfield logo and then um, just a really nice, um, you know, full over full overview of everything. That, you know, guitar, ballet, the gyms, the sports. Here's some stuff on their drama programs and what they do here. And you want to actually go through these and then start taking notes or um, writing down things that you think are going to be important for your essays, for your interviews. So that's why you do the inquiry form. Number one, it is required. Um, but number two, it's just cool. I mean, look at the school. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, and then you've got the make sure you get the admissions email um, for every school because that's how you're going to schedule your interviews, schedule your interviews um, with the admissions team over there. Like I said, usually around October, but as long as you do interviews before January 15th and then, yeah, any notes that you think are good. Yeah. So. Um, pretty similar for the UK, um, but generally in terms of how we rank the schools or how I would look at ranking the schools is by either GCSE or A-level results. Here it's A-level results and Schools um, love to publish their GCSE results. They love to publish their A-level results because it sort of means uh, where the students are going to after that in terms of university. Often we do put that one in um, as well, you know, um, student destinations, you know, what percentage of students go off to Ox uh, Oxbridge or Red Brick universities. Um, but yeah, we, we, we don't have like an SSAT percentage score that we can put on. So it tends to be the GCSE or the A-level results that they um, rank themselves on. 
Um, same for us. We have an inquiry link, not an inquiry link, but yeah. inquiry link. Yeah. <laughs> um, Spelling's the battle. <laughs> but a good one to look at with UK um, is student population versus boarding population. So if you look there at that top school, hopefully you guys can see it. Um, Ashford School in Kent, um, almost a thousand students, but just over 150 of them that board. Um, and that sort of is a quite common sort of ratio as they go down. Um, so it's worth bearing in mind how important that is to you. There are going to be some schools that are um, really high percentage of boarding students, some that are much lower. Um, so it, we definitely always put that one on there. That one's certainly worth bearing in mind. And also GCSE and A-level results, what percentage of students got A to B, A star to B. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, inquiry links and websites. Um, and a little bit on the fees as well. I think, yeah, I think something that stands out to me is the fees. Right. Yeah, the fees compared to the compared to the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The fees are really not, it's this. It's similar for universities too. Mm -hmm. um, the American education industry is absolutely insane yeah. when it comes to you know the price you pay for education. Mm -hmm. So this this might be a deciding factor for you guys too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's have a look at the next one. Oh, no. mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, a little bit of an error. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, um, bound to have something happen with our presentation this time, as that's how we roll. Um, I guess what we'll do here is, what we can do is actually go back up to... Go back up to the what yeah. What we'll cover. We'll go. Yeah. We'll go over some stuff with you guys, um, just to sort out the technical so error. Yeah. So that was cool. List. You can kind of see um, we're we're through most of this sort of stuff. Um, test prep and interview preparation um, is the SSAT for uh, for the U.S. Um, the SSAT is math, uh, reading, and then it's also verbal. OK, um, so the verbal is you have to just know vocabulary. They're going to give you crazy difficult vocabulary words. Um, they're going to give you something called analogies where you have to sort of figure out the relationship between words. Uh, reading is reading. Reading is reading. Um, but you can get some poetry in there. Um, you can get a, diff a bunch of different text types and it's all multiple choice, all multiple choice. Um, and then the math. Math is math. But I think um, I was talking to one of my students um, yesterday who's, who was asking for some uh, extra lessons from uh, some of our math teachers because his school hasn't taught the math equations that are in the SAT yet. Um, so that can be an issue for some students where um, you haven't seen what's on the test yet. You haven't seen in school what the SSAT math is doing. Um, so please make sure you do take a diagnostic test um, for the SAT and make sure you can kind of see those different um, sections. They're all multiple choice, okay, but um, if you haven't seen all the math equations, that can be a big issue. That can be a big issue. And then you're going to have to start studying vocabulary uh, well, well in advance um, because the words are um, incredibly challenging. I mean, yeah, a lot of kids, yeah, a lot of kids will challenge their parents to the SAT words. You know, by the by the time you're done learning SAT uh, vocabulary, um, you're gonna you're gonna have a better vocabulary than your parents. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's pretty intense. Um, and like I said, you can see some of those scores in the school list that we showed earlier. Um, you do want to try to get you know 85 percent, 90, 95 percent for some of those scores. So. Um, make sure you do go through that uh, SSAT. Mm -hmm. um, talk about the interview prep, but I guess maybe we talk about the UK one sure. first. Yeah. Yeah. So for year seven and year nine entry and actually year eight as well, you'll need to do what we call the CEE, which stands for the Common Entrance Exam. Now, if you go in in year seven, this is the 11 plus. If you go in in year nine, this is the 13 plus. Um, the exams are, they differ from school to school. Each school will give a different exam, but the format and the layout of the exam is pretty much identical. And what I mean by that is section one will be a reading comprehension. So an extract from a novel um, and um, comprehension questions. So finding information in text, analyzing author purpose, 
um, that sort of thing. And then section two will be writing. And some schools will give one writing prompt. So write a short story using this title. Some will give you a choice of five writing tasks. So writing to persuade, um, descriptive writing, narrative writing, that sort of thing. So um, whilst you do have to make separate school applications, the good thing is, is it's similar to the SSAT in that you apply for the same, you prepare for the same test. Okay, so we master comprehension skills, bits of vocabulary, and then lots on writing skills as well. Um, year 12 entry is different because you're doing subject specific. So if you know for your A-levels, you want to be taking biology, chemistry, uh, maths, and further maths, then you are going to have um, subject specific um, examinations um, for those, so you need to prepare for those. But for year seven and year nine entry, you do a CEE exam in both English and in maths. Yeah, um, I think uh, no matter where you take it, the, the questions are all essentially, yeah. essentially the same. Yeah. The skills you need to learn are the same across the board, right? And then yeah. I guess it's the same for both of us in terms yeah. of an interview preparation. Uh, we do work quite closely with our students to prepare for interviews. Because these can be pretty daunting experiences, especially yeah. if you're going into the year seven entry, you know, 10 or 11 years old, having to sit in front of, you know, potentially a panel of adults that you yeah. don't know and having Strangers. to talk about yourself. Yeah, um, I think talking about yourself is the weird, the weird part, thing. I, I yeah. think, when, when you're in school, because maybe you've never really thought about yourself yeah. um, outside of like, oh, well, me? Who, who am I? I just go to school. I just yeah. do classes. Well, I'm sure you have your own interests. I'm sure you have your favorite classes, your least favorite classes. Um, you know, these are the sort of things that you need to prepare for. Um, we, yeah, help our students with the most common interview questions. And then we try to throw some curveballs, too. A lot of the top schools will ask you some weird things like, um, what is the animal that you most closely identify with? And, you know, a lot of people say owls and, but you know, yeah, a lot of people say owls. A lot of people say owls for the U S ones because, Oh, they're so wise and <laughs> they look, you know, pretty sharp, but you want to have something weird. I had, a, I had a student, um, this past year who got in and they, and, and, um, uh, he got this question and he said that he would be a narwhal, oh, a narwhal. Reason. Well, he likes to swim. He likes to, right. Yeah, but a narwhal is a weird animal, yeah, you know, with the, the horn different. and everything, right? Yeah. So you want to you want to prepare, you know, some some answers that will make you stand out. Yeah. You don't want to have the same exact answer as everybody else when you're doing your interview preparation. Why do you want to come to this school? Oh, because my mom said, yeah. you know, have your own reasons mm -hmm. for going to the school. Yeah. That's one thing I like you to know? know my students when we're doing these kind of classes is, okay, you're applying to this school. Let's get into the website together. Let's look at things that they do at the weekends, clubs that they have, trips that they've been on. Mm -hmm. And when we find something that students like, you know, I would really love to do that. That would be cool. We make a note of it so that when it comes to the school interview and the student's able to say, oh, actually, you know, I was looking at your website and I saw that two years ago, a group of students went on a trip to X, Y, and Z, to yeah. do X, Y, and Z. It just shows a real interest in the school. And um, so interview prep, sometimes people can assume it's just kind of, Tell me about something you're proud of. But it's actually about getting to know the school and seeing if you align well with the school and getting your answers ready for that. So. Yeah, I, I think like align well, fit well, whatever you want to say, it's sort of intangible. It's mm -hmm. it's you have to get the test scores. You have to get the school grades. Um, we'll talk about a checklist here in a minute. Some of the other things you need. But um the X factor is just showing that you actually do align. You actually do fit. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of my students, I get them to follow their school, their favorite schools on Instagram, follow yeah. their favorite schools on, on Twitter and just keep track of what's going on. Keep track of the weird stuff that happens six months or two years or whatever it is. Yeah. So you can kind of show that, oh, this isn't just something I randomly uh, I heard from a friend that this is a good school, and so now I'm going to apply here. Show that you actually are really interested. Um, the other thing I think we maybe we didn't mention yet is also the the energy and the attitude when you are going in for your interview. Um, you know, we we were we were talking earlier about how where is it the school lists. We we're talking earlier when you have this school list. Uh, where, okay, so why are some of my SSAT scores lower? How can I get like a lower SSAT score and still get in? Um, it's because you have a personality. It's because you have a great personality in the interview. Um, it's because that, you know, 
grades are not the only important thing um, in your application. So have some energy, have some enthusiasm. And the only way you're really going to be able to show that is by finding something that you love about the school, whether it's on their social media, whether it's in you know a booklet, whether it's searching the website, whether it's visiting uh, London and the school itself or, or um, wherever it might be located um, and, and walking the grounds. But you're going to have to have that energy. And the more you know about a school and the stuff, if you find stuff that you actually like about it, you're going to you're going to just you know, sort of subconsciously be excited and it's going to, it's going to show through, um, in, in your smile, your facial expression, your tone of voice, you know, your skin will glow. It's all these different things when you actually become excited. Yeah. And I would say that that is even more important now as we move into the next year or two, most likely all interviews are going to be on zoom and are going to be through a screen. So the ability to come across, um, in, in an engaging way, in an exciting way, um, is really, really important because, you know, it, it's it's a little easier face-to-face to get a vibe with someone and to create an energy, but to do yeah. it through the computer is difficult and on different time zones. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I'm sure everybody's been going to school on Zoom or Skype or Google Meets or whatever your school is using, your, your teachers, your tutors, your consultants, whoever it is. Um but I think the problem with the, the people, if you're not talking to a counselor or a tutor or a consultant, if you're just doing your school teacher stuff, listen, we know what's going on with you guys. We know that you're turning your cameras off, you're muting your microphones, and you're just watching YouTube. Okay. So I know some schools yeah, have kind of, I mean, this is what's going on. So some schools have kind of caught on to this a little bit more and the, they're checking and punishing if you don't have your video on, they're checking and punishing if you don't, you know, have a mic and say something every once in a while. But you know, you got to ask yourself if, if you've been doing Zoom. Oh, I've been doing Zoom. I've been doing Skype, Google Meets. Have you really been engaging? Have you been carrying a conversation with a teacher or an adult online? Um, these interviews, the U.S. ones, are 30 minutes to an hour and a half. Um, yeah. And, and so um, they can actually be quite long where you do need to carry conversations um, and you need to be prepared for that. In general, I would say like the ratio of conversation, you should be roughly, you know, 40 to 60 percent of the conversation, right? 40 to 60 percent of the conversation. So you're at least, you know, you're at least talking pretty much like half the time. Um, if you find that, that the interviewer is talking, doing way more talking than you, you're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, if you're sort of like steamrolling or stealing the conversation, if you find that like maybe you're a little bit nervous and you're just kind of like chatting away, that's OK. But what you can do is maybe throw some questions in there. Say, ask yeah. Questions. I always tell my students just have a couple of questions lined up. I'm sure that they will ask at some point in the interview. Mm. Do you have any questions for us? Um, but even to be able to ask a question without that prompt of do you have any questions for us? You yeah. know, if it follows on from one of your answers, just say, well, that's reminded me. I was wondering if I could ask you guys something, something, something. Um, just shows, just as you say, the conversation balance, the ability to converse and not just sort of question Quick response, question, quick response. Yeah, yeah, where it's just like mechanical. Now, I think one of the things, too, is like if you are practicing and, and you know, maybe your friend told you some interview questions or or mom and dad, for you, mom and dad, if you have like uh, somebody who's in, in your friend group and you heard these were some of the questions before, you should be prepared for some of those. Yeah, you can definitely help prepare those. But then I would say if you are practicing for interviews at home, have somebody throw a weird question in there. Mm-hmm. Um, have, have a question that is based on – how the conversation develops. Like you're talking to somebody else. What is a natural topic that comes up, right? Um, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, and, and that's that, yeah, that stands out a lot. Yeah. definitely. And, and, that, and that's how you're going to sort of like, you know, save a, a lower, a lower score. Um, I ah, hear you. Uh, save a lower score on, on your SAT or your CEE mm-hmm. um, from that. Uh, Plenty visits. Okay. So, <laughs> Yeah, you cannot, you can't do that this year. Um, so nobody's doing that right now. Uh, let's pretend, let's hope that you will have this option, um, you know, this time next year. Um, planning the visits, like I said, for the U.S., the U.K. is typically around October. It's the fall break, right? Um, so you're going to, you know, fly over, rent a car, you're driving, 
to different states. So you do want to kind of, I think, you know, America's a really big place. Um, so you want to think, am I doing West Coast? Am I doing East Coast? That's your first big decision. Where am I even flying into? Uh, a lot of people will fly into either New York City uh, or Boston. Those are two of the big destinations because they're cheap flights. Um, and then you have a lot of schools around you, a lot of the best schools um, in those areas. So if you are planning your visits, um, consider Boston, consider New York City, uh, or alternatively, uh, you can get into San Francisco in the north or Los Angeles in the south of California. Um, but let's, let's also think about everybody that's, you know, trying to apply right now. If you're applying right now, you can't plan your visits. Uh, what do you do? Virtual tours. Virtual tours are crazy right now. Everybody's got a virtual tour ready. The schools have kind of like really rushed to figure this out and say like, how can we make this engaging? Because they're trying to sell themselves to you, you guys too. They're charging a lot of money and they want you to come. They want, they want students to come. So they're trying to sell themselves. So right now, when you submit that inquiry form, um, for the U S they will automatically send your email, all of the virtual tour stuff that they're doing. And then you can choose to sign up, sign up for everything you can. I had a dad, um, uh, actually he's in Japan. Um, but he was asking me this morning, I did a call with him and he's saying, well, should, should I do these virtual tours? Should we sign up for these? Yes. I mean, some of them, you know, if, if you do all of them, it could be time consuming. Um, but pick your favorite schools, pick as many as you can. And then for students have, you know, have a pen and paper, have a notebook while you're on these virtual things and write down things that are interesting to you. Write down some cool facts you learned or some cool experiences because you actually do want to include those um, in your essays, uh, in, your in the interviews. And there are so a lot of virtual tours um, for, for that end. Um, it's actually quite nice to be honest right now. I think this is the silver lining of the travel restrictions in the past, there would be no way for you to drive to all the schools on your list. There's the, it's just such a big place, and it would take you hours and hours and hours just to go from one school to another, never mind 10 or 12 schools. So there is a silver lining for people who are applying this year in that everything is just online. Yeah. Um, and you know, with your visits, um, yeah, you're not going to be able to actually set foot. It's, you know the grass and the, the, the you know, the, the uh, campus and stuff. It's just, it, it is, it is a little bit of a downside, but when it comes to traveling, your dad's not going to have to rent a car and drink a pot of coffee every single day to get yeah. you around. Yeah. Um, um, I would say that, yeah, the virtual stuff, very similar to the UK. I know a lot of schools are putting stuff online. Um, they're doing live events. They're doing virtual tours. They're even getting some of the students to do the, some of the tours for them and show them around. Um, but as Emerson said, let's imagine that's not the case. In terms of visiting schools in the UK, uh, you have the size of the country on your side. Um, it's pretty little to get around, certainly if you're applying, let's say, within England, um, flying into London, um, getting around schools in Surrey and Kent, um, down near Brighton Way, very, very easy to do. Um, we do a lot of train travel in the UK. Trains are pretty big, but also renting a car, pretty cheap in the UK, pretty easy to get around and do. Um, so I don't think you'd need as much time because you could realistically visit two schools in a day um, and do that for sort of four days and see quite a few schools. Mm, um, yeah. So yeah, pretty close. A lot of the boarding schools tend to be down sort of Surrey, Kent, they're sort of outside in London area. So flying into London and um, being around that area is pretty easy when you can. Yeah, do we? Jo we were talking about like the train line app down the down yeah. the yeah. If you guys, if anybody's ever gone into Heathrow Airport, and then uh, you know if you go to Paddington Station mm -hmm. on the train, um, you know if you have that app, it's called Train Line on your phone. Mm -hmm. um, you can get tons and tons of tickets um, very easily. Keep it all you know uh, organized in in that uh, digital wallet. And uh, yeah, keep track of the timings and, and that sort of thing. This is the train, the one thing I noticed by the train. Are they on time? Are they ever on time? Um, there's a lot of <laughs> delays yeah. in the train. The weather, you know, for a country it's, where it rains so much, it'd be amazing yeah. how many train delays there are because of the rain. Yeah, there's um, and so there's an, anticipate. I would say with that in mind, just anticipate a little bit. Don't, don't cut it too close. 
um, if you are taking the trains. Um, but then, yeah, you can, you know, uh, rent that car and everything else. Um, did we miss anything for planning the visits? Uh, oh, application checklist. Okay, so for this, I do want to kind of go back to... Okay, so application checklist. Um, I want to go back to this different part right here where it's SAO versus gateway. Um, the applications are essentially the same, um, but remember with Gateway, you do need all of your applications to be submitted separately. So just be careful with that. Um, both the SAO and the Gateway are going to have to have uh, your school transcripts. You need to get your school transcripts from your teacher. Okay, so if you're playing at home, write that down. Make sure you ask your counselor, your school counselor for the school uh, transcripts. You will also need three recommendations. You'll need three recommendations. Um, one is from your school principal. Uh, don't worry, this is your school principal's job. He, she does this all the time. So don't feel too nervous. Um, obviously, you might not be best friends with your school principal. Talk to your counselor. Talk to your counselor. The counselor will tell the principal who needs a recommendation. Okay, and the principal will write the recommendation. So principal. Uh, English teacher, this is your most recent English teacher. Uh, and then your most recent math teacher, because those are the two most popular subjects in school, right? Um, so you'll need all those. So transcripts, recommendations. You'll need to submit the, S, uh, the SSAT scores. Uh, like I said, you can submit any score you want um, as long as it's before January 15th, okay? So if you have a score that's coming in December, you don't like your current score, um, yeah, maybe you wait until December. Maybe you wait until December and submit that one later. Uh, and then all of your essays. Again, just be careful, guys, because the Gateway ones, they're all separate essays um, versus the SAO. Everybody sees the same ones. It saves, it saves a lot of time. Uh, other than that, um, yeah, that, that's basically it. It's a very straightforward process. I think it really does help. You know, we talked about staying organized. Start a Google Drive. Start, start a Google Drive, start a folder, dump everything into folders, have a bunch of Google Docs, have a bunch of spreadsheets, whatever you feel most comfortable doing. Um, just, yeah, stay, stay organized with those yeah, different things. Yeah, I think UK checklists um, are very similar in terms of transcripts and, and recommendations and references. Um, it varies school to school. There isn't sort of a set three that you need. For example, the schools will let you know, okay, we need this year's transcript or we need this um, head of year or tutor group, something, something. Um, and yeah, as you get into the school specific applications, you'll realize what needs to go onto the checklist pretty early on. Yeah. Um, there's an example called yeah. the UKI set, um, which needs to be done for quite a lot of the schools. That's sort of a verbal and nonverbal reasoning test, as well as comprehension. Then there's the CEE uh, and then the interview. So um, yeah, it really does depend on the school, but sort of a general checklist of things is um, start getting in, you know, either exam practice or tutorial classes for the CEE because it's a very specific yeah. exam with quite a rigid um, structure to it. Um, references and transcripts. And I'd say that's kind of. Yeah, it's all just in the prep. There's not too it many is. things. It's, you know, it's, it's only a handful of things. But um, you do really want to prep, and I, I think yeah, under all of underneath all the application stuff is just the test, the test prep. Yeah, the test prep. I mean, prep honestly, yeah, yeah, like figure out your math equations because you're probably they're probably going to be ahead of your school teacher. Mm -hmm. um, figure out, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily read a lot, even if you're doing English class. Um, have you ever read a poem? You might see poetry, so make sure you are prepping. And I'd say, yeah. like, I have quite a lot of students that come and sort of start preparing for the CEE. Incredibly smart and bright and obviously do these subjects at school. But with the CEE, it's really about knowing the exam and knowing yeah. the mark schemes and knowing what's going to get you the three marks on a three mark question. Because um, if you don't sort of answer them in quite a specific way or sort of say exactly what they're looking for, then it gets a bit tricky. It's not necessarily just about kind of what you've been taught at school, knowing things. It's about, you know, looking at mark schemes and looking at this is what they want me to be able to say in this question, right? Yeah. And then we'll, I think that's one of those sort of um, tricks of the trade. Yeah, you're, right. you're going to have to just go through and figure out exactly how to write your answer, um, some of the key words, the key language in your writing and, mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. And that goes into your essays too. You know, when you... When you get one of these um, books or if you're searching the UK website, um, 
try to get a sense of the feel, try to get a sense of what that school is and then give them what they want, you know, give, make sure that you show the, that you're aligned or you're fit for that school. Um, some schools are known to be a little bit more academic. Um, you know, in the UK, we always think of Eton is the, you know, the super academic sort of MP um, school that really sort of uh, primes people for, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, well, so yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, it's like the PPE, right? The PPE kids, yeah, um, in Oxford. But um, yeah, so that Oxford prep type schools in the UK versus a place like, I always think of um, Undle. Mm-hmm. Undle's kind of a really cool school because it's a really nice mix of academics, but then like the school spirit, the the, the vibe. Uh, I had a student who actually helped them build their new or design their new swimming pool. Over, yeah, he, like he's like an arc. He's going to arc, uh, uh, uni for architecture now and stuff too. So he's crazy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, you know, make sure you do know just not just the stats of a school. I would yeah, say, yeah. Um, and what it takes to get in. Just make sure that it is actually what you're going for as far as your vibe. Um, I know, you know, some of the students who are go to, to in the U.S. Uh, Andover and Exeter, you will have your classmates maybe teasing you about what math class you got into, what kind of English class you got into, and so you do get a lot of academics there. Um, versus a place like um, uh, like a like a Deerfield, which is more is still very very academic, but a lot more um, focused on creativity and these sorts of things too. So know your schools, know the identities, and then just give yourself enough time. We recommend two years, in some cases three years, yeah, yeah, yeah. for the UK. Um, can it be done in the last second? Could you start now and finish? Yes, um, we definitely have a lot of uh, parents and students coming in. Uh, just in the last couple of weeks um, to sort all of this out. Um, but just be prepared because it's a lot to take in, especially if you've never done the test prep. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you can do it. You can do it earlier. You can do it later. You can choose what grade you want to do. Um, but stay organized and make sure you understand everything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I think, I think that's good. I think we have covered the basics now. We cover the basics is this, do we? The queen was. Uh, oh, I can't move our. Oh, she got covered up. I saw that. Poor, poor old. Birdie. Yeah. Birdie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So uh, that was that was a that was an hour, guys. We won't keep you too much later. Thank you for uh, some of the questions that we did get. Again, um, we will post this on YouTube and all our other social media accounts. Um, so if you do have additional questions as far as your personal. Uh, boarding journey, yep. Um, yep. you know, depending on when you're going, if it's this year um, or that year, um, please let us know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we can help, you know, uh, describe everything in a way that fits you best. Yeah. Happy to help. Cool. All right. Um, I guess we'll leave it at there. Uh, yeah. Bye, Cecil. Bye. Bye. Okay. Have see you guys. Weekend. Thank you guys. Thank Have a good you. weekend. Bye. Uh, yeah, something was always going to happen. Yeah, what here, huh? So they just they just checked it, and it's working. So in the email, it's working. For the, yeah, so, uh, so in, yeah, so this is the other stuff that we had, right? It's in there. Yeah, uh, but, oh well. Yeah, maybe, yeah. The, the unexpected. But you can try our best to make sure this whole thing goes to end. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we still, I mean, we still covered everything, but it would have, there was some. Uh, would have been great. Yeah. Would have been great, yeah, yeah so, definitely. We have so. Yeah. So do you think we still want the um, video or not? So, okay, so I'll just like, um, yeah. Thank <laughs> you.